So Kelly, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to our Code Pink community. Thank you for joining Code Pink and taking on our growing a local peace economy project. What's cool is that you have your own local peace economy. So you know mm. what it is, you know the joy it is and the real work that it is right. and also the real need. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -mm. here we are the day after an election, after we threw billions of dollars and tons of time at uh, a system that serves the war economy. Mm -hmm. And um, we can be excited that there was a pink wave. A lot more women um, and a lot more diversity in the women. I love your language. <laughs> <laughs> pink wave. I was like, it's a pink wave too? That's cool. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's awesome. I was just like taking it out. You know, the yeah. Democratic Party and the Republican Party, yeah. they both serve the war economy. Yeah. So, you know, you could have a pink wave. Well, I think the local peace economy way of looking at it would be that we've spent a lot of time, people have been galvanized to organize in their own communities. And so we have a lot of relationships today that we didn't have six months ago or a year ago. And so that kind of sets us up already for, once everybody rests and gets themselves together a little bit and does some self-healing and some self-care, to um, plan a meal with community, with the people that they've met, you know, out there knocking on doors the people who have really shown up to volunteer, the people who have really shown up to stay late, phone banking. I was getting text messages in Oakland the day before, the night before, about text banking, which I'd never heard of before, and met some really young, beautiful um, college students who were phone banking for friends and folks who were running for office. Those are relationships to maintain and to work, to like, like treat it like neuropath new neuropathways. So you got to continue to blaze the new, the new neural pathway so that the, the, the grass doesn't become overgrown. No more sitting on the couch and we're thinking about what's going on or looking at what's going on in our communities, but actually using those new relationships that are fertile and exciting and get together and talk, make a meal, a pot of tea, you know, and invite people over or gather where you've been gathering and uh, figure out what you want to do next. I think that's the huge opportunity right now. And I know people are heart, I'm heartbroken. I, mean, I live in Oakland, California, and there's a lot going on uh, for children, for elders, for people who are most, um, most compromised on their lives when, they're, when we're not observing local peace economy. That means getting together, sharing, nurturing, caring for relationships. These are people who are peripheralized and marginalized, especially the most vulnerable. So. You know, um, the incumbent, she was reelected, and but you know, the, the people who organized, and we all know who we are now, and we can continue to support each other and to support those children and those elders and people who are being made to be homeless in ways that we probably hadn't even thought about before, you know, this election. So it's exciting, too, even though it's, it's I want to I honor the fact that people are heartbroken. I do want to say that. So was um, the homeless issue a big issue in the race in Oakland? I think for, for activists and people who are um, deeply disturbed by, by, by houselessness and the reasons for it, gentrification, Oakland's kind of ground zero for what's going on globally, ground zero in the United States for what's going on globally around um, uh, moving people, you know, forced migration, pushing people out of their homes for corporate you know, spaces and tech companies and that kind of thing. I know in this area that you guys are kind of going through a little bit of that too, so everyone's feeling that. Um, so there is a fear, I think, on the part of folks who um, support establishmentarianism, I guess, to support folks who are going to keep things safe and keep money moving through cities and communities. But what we really need to do right now is hold on to each other and love each other because the money's not going to save us. <laughs> you know, it's not. It hasn't ever and it's not going to. You know? So, yeah. so if somebody's listening and they, they want to figure out what they could do, mm -hmm. are you available to support them in that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wherever you are, of course, to definitely. To talk to, to email, um, to work things out, to even point folks. Very exciting to be able to point folks in the direction of either you know, communities or activist folks or organizations or just a, a person that they could, to help them um, ignite, you know, and take advantage of this feeling, this moment right now where you know what's next mm -hmm. so yes 
So um, some of the, the local peace economy gatherings are really to figure out what's next, the constantly what's next as we watch the effects of the money we invest in weapons and war mm -hmm. come home to our communities and the 60% of our tax dollars that goes to bomb outside the United States, but also the weapons that come home and the police that are now militarized and our minds that are militarized and our culture is militarized. So when you're um, thinking about <clears throat> what the peace economy looks like for you or what love is, how love is expressed, mm -hmm. where, what are some examples you've seen that are really beautiful and touching that if somebody doesn't know what to mm. do, if you could, you know, as we say here, you know, at Growing a Local Peace Economy, we're planting seeds and building yeah. bridges and telling stories. So maybe um, tell us a couple of your favorite stories. I particularly appreciate when folks um, are in an elevator and you have that moment of like silence and there's all strangers in an elevator and <laughs> saying hello or telling a joke or saying something in that muted space that's so pregnant with like there's all this possibility and having people that don't know each other laugh and by the time they get off the elevator they're talking and they're this is such a like a, a visceral example of how we're we're we force our spirits down in a way and it always feels weird to me like almost like oh god i want to say something but you know that's local peace economy because you walk off the elevator and you know people and you've you've brightened someone's day and you planted that little but of okay, it's 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 I'm not alone in the world, you know. So I think I think when we think about economy, um, it's like it feels huge and it feels big, and it can be, but it's also it starts right within us as we approach our communities. So saying hello to people on the street, buying a cup of coffee for someone if they don't really have enough, you know, um, just. But the first negotiation is within ourselves, to have the courage. Because it takes courage, unfortunately, to tap into that place that we've been convinced is meaningless and doesn't and can't do anything mm -hmm. and is worth less. So tapping into that and then the miracle that, that comes after we do it and it's so much fun and it's great, you know? And in Oakland, there are lots of amazing place th things that are happening with people. Well, um, maybe you could tell us about you know, yours project. My, <laughs> my local peace economy project? Mm -hmm. The Electric Smoothie Lab Apothecary. Yeah. Um, we go out into community uh, where children are living and elders and, and people living in food deserts. I'm not sure if everyone knows what a food desert is, but it's a place where there's a lack of living food, a lack of access to living food. And we make smoothies for them. We make smoothies and people laugh, they're like, we make smoothies, but yeah, it's it's Living nutrition is something that um, is not just an offering from our community. A lot of the things are locally harvested and we get them from, you know, uh, gardens and that kind of thing. A lot of the greens and things are donated, but it's also um, an offering unto the health and longevity of the recipient. And so in the giving of it is an explosion of love, but also the person who's giving it has an idea and they take it back to their own community too. Like, how do I do this? How do I make, you know, a smoothie? Um, for my mother or for my, my grandfather who's diabetic. And it started when I was working for a food justice organization in, in West Oakland and met a little boy who had diabetes but he was afraid to try the green smoothie because he had diabetes and he thought, well, is this gonna be, is this safe for me to drink? And I thought, wow. So that was kind of like the bud that started, you know, a radical um, journey in my life of just going and doing that. and. Like I said, it's like being laughed at by people. It's like, how are you going to change the world with smoothies? <laughs> but we were just awarded a fellowship by Wayfinder Foundation. Thank you, Wayfinder, which is awesome. And I've met a lot of amazing people. Um, I just followed that, the eyes of that little boy, knowing that he's probably headed, unfortunately, um, for not such a good place because he's, his educational opportunities are diminished. His opportunities for, for, for healing through health and good food are diminished even though he lives, you know, right down the street from a, um, a co-op place, but his mother couldn't afford to buy what was there. So the idea that when we go out and do this one small thing, which is just plug in a blender and get some stuff and put it in it, that we're really changing the world by feeding children in communities that have been forgotten is really powerful and amazing. That's exactly what, <laughs> going on with the piece of time, that's a perfect story. 
So what's your email in case someone uh, wants to reach out and get your help? Kelly C. Kelly C. at CodePink.org. Great. Well, we hope you'll reach out and join us in growing a local peace economy.